Okay, so now we're going to write a web browser again in Python, but it's going to even be shorter than what we did before. We did it in 10 lines using sockets. Now we're going to do it in four lines with urllib. So urllib really is just because the idea of opening a connection, sending a get request, sending the new line, retrieving the stuff, breaking the headers out, doing all this stuff, that's so common, why not put it in a library to save ourselves some effort? So here's how we do it. We're going to read it in, right? We're gonna import this library, so it's not part, of, we had to import sockets before, but we're gonna import urllib now. And so this is really quite simple. It's like elegantly simple. You say urllib, that's a library, that's a part of a, a module within the library, and this is a function. So let's call url open, and then give it the URL. Now that's a string which it's gonna encode automatically for us. So it's taking care of all kind of pretty things for us. It does the get, it does the encode. Look back at that previous code. That's kind of what urllib is doing for us, okay? Now what urllib also does is it makes the connection, encodes the get request, and then it actually retrieves, at this moment, it retrieves all the headers and keeps them for you for later. You can get the headers, but we're not gonna see the headers. And it returns to you an object that looks pretty much like a file handle because you can put this in the for clause after the in. Now it's going to read, run that loop one time for every line of this file. And so the lines we're gonna get back are bytes, and so we have to say decode. It doesn't do that for us automatically. We are gonna to have to decode them, and that's because we might need to decode them with a particular character set here. And then we're gonna do our strip, and we're gonna just print this out. So that's just, that's like open a file, read through it, and print it. This is open a URL, read through, and print it. And that's as simple as it is. And so that's what happens. This is Romeo.txt, and it, does, it prints out. Now the thing to notice is that there are no headers here. The headers have been sort of consumed in the URL open. Again, there is a way to say, hey, give me my headers. But for now, this is just going to eat the headers and keep them. And then you get to read all the data. And the loop runs. And this loop runs four times. And out come the four lines. You can go ahead and run this one. It's super easy. I mean, literally super easy. And if you, you can do anything you want. I mean, treat it like a file. You just have to remember to do the decode bit uh, when you treat it like a file. And so we, that code import it. We're gonna open it. We're going to make a dictionary. We're gonna loop through. We're gonna split it. We have to add the decode just to make sure because that line is bytes, not string. And then we're gonna go, you know, our words. We're gonna go through the line and then each line we're gonna bounce through the words. The inner for loop is bouncing through the words and then we're gonna to go to the next line. And then we make ourselves in this a dictionary and we print that dictionary out. Now this is this in effect, other than you know, importing this, opening it differently, and doing the decode, this is exactly how we would process a file. And so by using urllib, you really sort of reduce the complexity of retrieving and reading network resources to the same complexity of reading and uh, dealing with a file locally on your hard drive, which is uh, kind of pretty. So one of the things then we can do is read web pages. That was a text file, but this, you can get HTML. And so here's how you read a web page. And it's the same kind of code. We open a, we open a, a URL. This one happens to have HTML in it and we read through it and out comes the HTML. Remember that the headers are there, but they've been eaten by URL open for us. And now we could write a browser that would parse these less thans and greater thans and make links, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you can come up with ways to find these links, you could actually write a bit of code that would then have a loop that would go up and open a new one. Pull out the links, open a new one. Pull out the links, open a new one. And so you could, you could make a thing that would retrieve, a, you could write a program that would retrieve a, pro, a page, find the links in the page, and then retrieve those links. And we'll actually do that before the end of the class. And so Python is a very popular language at Google, and I wonder if they're, I'm going to, I think it's a pretty safe bet that the first crawler that they wrote to crawl the web to build the index was Python, because literally that's all it takes to read web pages and um, pull those web pages into your web crawler database. So I don't know, are those the first four lines ever written to Google? Who knows? 
So the next thing that we'll talk about is how you handle that HTML. Um, HTML is kind of yucky and nasty, and so it's not as simple as regular expressions. Regular expressions might help, string parsing and split might help, but it's just too crazy. So we'll talk a little bit about how to use a library to make HTML parsing a lot easier.